Welcome to lecture 50, exercise 3. The challenge for this exercise is to create a method named sum that accepts any number of integer parameters and displays their sum. Write a main method that demonstrates the sum method works correctly when past 1, 3, or 5 integer values or even an array of 10 integers. So basically, this function needs to handle any amount of integers or an array of integers, and then you actually need to demonstrate all these different situations. So if you'd like to try this on your own, go ahead and pause the video now and try it. If not, I will go over it now. So let's start off by actually making this function of sum. Now, the tricky part of this is how do we make a function take in a, a range of different amount of parameters? And if you went through the lectures, you would know that there is a keyword that we can use to make it accept any amount of parameters. The keyword is the params keyword. So I'm going to say public static void sum. And the trick is, like I said, the params keyword. So I'm going to say params, then integer array, my array, we'll say. So with the params keyword, you always have to be an it has to be an array still because it says it needs to handle an array of 10 integers. So we need that array. The params keyword allows us just to enter in the values of any amount of arguments or parameters. So we can have 5, 10, 15 separate parameters or separate arguments, or we could pass in the entire array. When we pass in the separate arguments using the params, it, it comes into the function as the array, and then you can do whatever you want. So what we have to do is that we have to make our function add up all the values inside of this array and then print it to the console. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a variable that's going to keep track of the, the sum, basically. So I'm going to say int sum equals 0. We're assigning it the value 0 to start off with because there's nothing in it yet. Then I'm going to create some kind of loop that's going to iterate over the array. I'm going to use a for loop in this case. I'm going to say for int i equals 0. As long as i is less than my, rank, my array dot length, i plus plus. So I'm saying this is going from 0 to how long the array is. It's going to go through every single element, basically. Every time it goes through an element, I'm going to add it to sum by saying sum plus equal my array sub i. So my array sub i will get the actual element at that position in the array and then add it into the sum. Now that I have all the sums added up, once the loop is done, I can just print out the value of the sum. I'm going to say console.write line. The sum is placeholder passing in sum. So now I can literally call sum on any of these combinations. So it says on 1, 3, 5, and an array. So I'm going to say sum on 1, I'm just going to pass in 5. Then sum on 3, 5, 10, 15. Sum on 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And then sum on an, or an, on an array. So I'm going to create an array first, int my array equals, and we'll just do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, because it says of 10 elements. And then I want to sum that up by saying sum my array. So I'm passing in this array into the sum also. So I can do it this way, or I can take this array and pass in the array. So let's see what happens. So the first time, sum is 5. The second time, sum is 30. Third time, sum is 75. And the fourth time, sum is 550. That's the array. So this is a perfect example of why methods are actually even really useful. Is because if I wanted to do the summing for all these different combinations without methods, I would have to write this for loop four times in this case and have four different console.write line statements. And the, there'd be so much code duplication. However, with using methods, I don't have to do that. I can write the method one time, and I can call it four separate times, and run the same code over and over again, so there's no code duplication. 
anytime I need to make changes to that function, I can make the changes in that function. And then everyone who uses that function sees those changes reflected. So you only have to change it in one place. You can imagine if you're using this, if you're using this code a hundred times without functions, you have to change it, the code a hundred times if you if there was a problem, but with functions, if I'm using it a hundred times, I change it once and all hundred times are updated and fixed.